Got that same three and a half miles an hour steady wind right down the runway, and that's really can really can't complain about that. Now I didn't notice the density altitude earlier, but it's 1,340 feet now. So that's uh, that's only going to climb through the day. It's going to get thinner air, which isn't going to help. But if they can fly everybody in each class relative, if everybody in each class flies at about the same time, it'll be at about the same density altitude to be equal for each pilot. So how will uh, the next round of the competition, everybody will have, have um, the run, the top two from each class will compete? Oh no, I think this is the main, the main event. Uh, I don't think we're going to have any... I don't think we're going to have anybody that ties you know you have to have a flight to break a tie i think where is our absolute distances so we're in the we're in the we're in the bush class now and this is the this is a class that uh is uh Usually in Alaska, it's the, the biggest number of people, you know, biggest number of Super Cubs. There might be 30 Super Cubs that compete. And then, uh, you know, 10 or 15, the most in the other classes. Uh, Super Cub is the workhorse that in Alaska that you see so many of. I was at a stole competition in New Zealand um, a couple of years ago, three or four years ago, and... Uh, there it was Cessna Skywag. This the big, the big Cessnas over here. They had 25 of those that flew because people with different branches or stanches had uh, flew those airplanes. Um, and it was hot there, and they still they flew them well. But, uh, here's the exciting bush class. Oh yeah, we do have a. Yeah, we got a perhaps a Robinson coming in here. It's out by the long. Yeah, that's uh, arriving. So I think these guys are all. These are, it's a public use airport, so it's kind of a common thing. Stop and yeah, the, the, how old is the Super Cub design? Mm. Well, here comes uh, Stavo up to the line, and uh, that's a long question. That's a but the safe the answer to that is to say it's venerable. It's an old design. Yeah. The actual Super Cub, I think, was first first built in the early 50s or 40s, as it's as it is today, as a PA-18. But it had come from a Cub that was developed as far back as the 30s. The technology was there. There's Gustavo at the line. Ready for his first run and the first man in the, the bush class. And we've got a good breeze. It's up now. Yeah, it's just I'm going to say it's at least five to seven now. <coughs> Rather steady. Rather steady. What I've noticed is on the leading edge of the wings, uh, some of them have these small little fins that they've stuck on. Oh, the VGs, yeah. yeah. And what's the benefit of that? It's they let you, they let the wing, they create a little vortice behind them and that vortice will hold as the wing gets to a bigger higher angle of attack those vortices will remain attached keep the airflow attached to the top of the wing instead of a big slab of air breaking free yeah. the vortices they 
a thicker rough layer of air. And uh, Gustavo is just getting all smooth and ready. Maybe waiting for that helicopter to stop entirely its rotor. Or he might just be calming his nerves. Or waiting for the gust that just dropped calm. He wouldn't. He had a good breeze when he first pulled in the line. Yeah, the, uh, the wind socks in. Yeah. Wind socks, I think. Oh, but here he goes. Yep, yeah. yeah, he got it up clean. They're marking that at uh, 85, something like that. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some more coffee with whiskey soon. Guinea. So now, Stavo's on downwind. It's very peaceful and relaxed here. Very relaxed. The lady just offered us, came up to offer us a little coffee and water if we need it. And we got one airplane in the pattern at a time. It's just a low pressure. Nice and easy. Stavo turning into his final. See if he's got himself. Five on the nose, according to what it says. And he's carrying power. No. Yep. Yeah, pretty sure he's before the line. Yeah, well before the line. Yep, yeah, he's not even going to stop for that. He knows he was... And here it comes for a second. Take off. First one, I think he asked it to fly a little earlier, and it was clean. He kept it in the air, but this one he asked a little later, and so he was very confident to stay airborne. You said it's a, this is a public airstrip. There are a few private airstrips around the place. Oh yeah. Up in Lago Rosario, I think there's one in Cholila also. I guess that's the beauty of having such a big country. <laughs> you can start to put your own your own airstrip in. Oh yeah, and how many people around the world would love to have the elbow room to be able to go out somewhere and and uh, forge your own airstrip under the into the terrain to go out and fly around and Pretty countryside. A lot of people here in in uh, at this flying have come from Buenos Aires, you know, where yeah. it's where the employment is, you know, where the business is, businesses in the cities. 
But they can have their airplane, they can get out here. No, uh, TK's looking at this, you know, sort of being a Mecca, a place to go to, a place away from the city. So, oh, and here's Gustavo and landing number two. This time, three mile an hour wind. Thanks, Loriana. I'm referencing like from the orange cone, and he looks very really close in the line. Yep, we gotta wait in here. Is this on? Wait to hear. Yep, so he's got a total of uh, 165 meters mm -hmm. in the second round. So that last landing was 80 meters. 85 meters for the takeoff. And oh, it's like there. Guillermo. Guillermo. Also, Mayu. Must be in the same. Yes, they're, they're using the same plane there. You know the plane. I've seen the plane in the hangar. Oh, here you go. Here, mom. Clean takeoff. The judges are moving down as you can see the action is closer to the takeoff line as it gets shorter here. Restored cars are quite the thing, huh? Stabilized, coming in. Yeah. 
last year with other cows walked up. It's, uh, yeah, really life and stuff like that. Um, so tell me about the, tell us about the event last year. What was that like compared to this year? Mm -hmm. uh, well, last year it was, it was hot. Uh, we didn't have much shade. Um, and the planes were all on this side of the uh, runway. Oh. So people were walking amongst the planes, which is nice, but it's also there's a risk there because they touch things they shouldn't touch. Um, well, I think th this year it's, it's much better uh, organized. There he goes. We're just, just generally improving little by little, you know, uh, taking some feedback uh, from what the <laughs> the event are saying um, there's more stuff for the children this year because uh, it's nice to come with your kids but you want to look at stuff and the kids are, <laughs> are pulling on your, your sleeve oh, they want right. this they want that so uh, we've got some uh, bounty castles and some, some games and stuff now for the kids we've got the, the tent that we've got from the, the council we've lent them the tent for what was that that big white tent yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, well let's see what the music is like I mean, the band last year were really good. Oh, for tonight? Yeah, for Big tonight. music yeah. night. Yeah. But, but Sundays is a very uh, family thing here. Uh, the plaza in Trevelyan, after about four o'clock, everybody comes from wherever, from the scale, and they just drive around the, the plaza and there's, there's a ferrier. And they just sit oh, and have with the family, play football. Um, really? So yeah. it's, a, it's a family night to go to town. Oh, yeah, very just interesting. in the afternoon and you just meet up with people. Uh, because a lot of people live on farms, sometimes just the weekend is when they come into into town. So it's a, it's a very social social event. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sunday afternoons. <coughs> and one of the things we'd like to try and do is bring people from the plaza. You can walk. It's a nice walk along the river. You cross the bridge and you come to the hangar. So one of the things we'd like to be able to do is have somewhere they can sit and have a coffee and just walk to planes. Mm -hmm. Because that's make it part of the community. Is, yeah, make it part where they can. Just sit and watch. There's a gate up here like on the other side of the runway. We don't have access to the cameras, but the, just straight across the field here, maybe yeah. you can see there's a gate that's a, out, the, out the opposite side of the airport here. And um, there were boys there yesterday on the motorcycles that stopped to, to just look down here. I was up there and they were going real slow and they could peer down and see what's going on. Yeah. And it's good to have those kind of people have access to the airplanes yeah. so they can you know somehow become a part of it some time someday yeah well it's, it's something to aspire to you know i'd love to be one of the things I'm, i want to try and do is, is learn to fly so, yeah well here we've got um Gustavo. <clears throat> on short final the wind is still the same 3.8 he's doing really well oh I'm sinking out nice. That's costing. Looks like he, sa <laughs> he saved the run, but he gave himself. And they're landing. All's well, it ends well. Yeah. Yeah, so just at the other end of this very same airport, just off the airport property, but right right adjacent to it is a big uh, big horse grounds down there. Yeah, and the, yesterday there must have been Campo Kinetiada, the uh, rodeo. Rodeo. The rodeo. They do they do a couple of events. They do the rodeo uh, with the, the the green horses and they hang on for as long as they can. But there's another event where they go in and out of the barrels. Mm -hmm. Which is quite familiar. Barrel racing. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, very much the culture here. Yes. Uh, horses. Everybody loves loves horses. You know, you see them around the streets. Um, we're, we're, we're okay. It's quite funny. Another, another beautiful lady offered us some more coffee. So, yeah. that's, that's, <laughs> so we've got... Uh, so, yeah. So, let's see. Now, who... 
Guillermo's this will be second this will be one, he's got Tinti. 167, so they're switching out pilots now yeah. to Tinti. So 68 Tinti meters for the first, the second takeoff. Second takeoff, 68 meters, landing 99. 167 meters. So the, uh, there's horse grounds down there, the rodeo grounds, just a big green field, the fence all around it, and there's just, you know, we've got so many people on horseback that are just on beautifully, beautiful, well-trained horses yeah. that are around, and then they put the young guys on these unbroken horses, they tie the horse's head to a post so that he can get his get on the horse, and yeah. there's three or four people helping him to hold the horse and get on the horse, and then they uh, then they turn the horse loose, and the, the rider actually has to encourage the horse to buck and to yeah. not, because, not fall off. And, and then also to try not to fall off, so apparently if the horse doesn't get get to bucking you don't get a much of a score so you want yeah. the horse as active as possible yeah, yeah, yeah. so you can still hold on so it's like a little arc to it and everybody's dressed in big in so black uh what do you call those black big wide mushroom top uh i know uh, uh sombreros black hats yeah uh, yeah they're always <laughs> It makes me laugh because I see them go with they pass my house and they're always well dressed. These guys, you know, they, yeah, they're well dressed. They're yeah. all but somehow they deteriorate through the day as they drink more wine and eat more meat, and the <laughs> horses just know the way home because <laughs> these guys are they're just so pissed. You know, they they're hanging on and they they got a mate with them as well sometimes, and they just the horses know which way to, to get them back home. Oh, but they, they, for some of the, some of these guys, it's their their main event of the year. Like it's here for the stall. You know, these guys are. They're running on the, the same day. Yeah. Uh, so far, so good. Have you drank out of a, a bota? Oh, I never have. I have one of those. Oh, there's, uh, there's a but lot I've never it. used one here. I've never used one in its in its context of the, of the land that it's normal. We'll have to try and do that. It's a sad. <laughs> and here's Tinty back seat up for his first goal. <coughs> Wonder how much fuel they're carrying. They're carrying enough fuel I'm curious how for can... both of them to do yeah. this flight. So it's a, you it's know, the a if you, you know, penalty for the first guy. Yeah, it's penalty. It. it is. I think. Um... get to fly a little bit early but their judges are walking back the market power wait power wait when i was uh, 15 16 i used to help a guy in a garage <coughs> vintage racing cars 750 cc engines austin sevens and uh we'd go competing around the tracks in, in the uk and yeah we'd, we'd weigh everything Every gram. Every gram. Yeah, because, I mean, it was vintage and it was... Uh, on a, you still want to Did weigh. you have to be the same weight? Or did you... Were they balancing the weights of the cars? Or was it more like, wrong what you're wrong and bring it as light as you can Just bring it? bring it as light as you can. Yeah, there was a safety. Everything was in... Because you know, people can make things too light. Unless they break. Uh, and it was a fun thing. It wasn't too competitive. Once, you, once you've done a few races, people start to... If you just skim a piece off here. And fuel was always the thing that we were always weighing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, we, you know, it doesn't take much fuel to do this. So, you know, if people fly here and they don't have a way to drain their fuel, it's, uh, fuel is so, such a big deal to get in this country. Just people that fly across country have to make a lot of phone calls and arrangements to make sure yeah. they'll have fuel. So here we are, short final. Tinty on his first landing. Mm -hmm. 
Is he in? Is he in? Yeah. I think he made it. Spun because uh, one break was dragging more than the other, or with the way he with the controls. How did he spin like that? Yeah, so you know, there's as you know, there's separate brakes on each on each yeah. wheel, and if when the tail came up, he was a little worried about it breaking too much. When he released the brakes, he probably saw he was turning a little bit in one direction. Well, when you release the brakes, it kind of spun him around the other way. Yeah. Released a brake on one side and then it, you know, it spun. It was more important just to get stopped than it was to be straight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we used to do them at fiddle brakes, I think we used to call them on the trials cars. As they go and you lock one side so you could spin around the tree and the, the post. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Find himself up quite quickly for the so these super cubs, you know, they <coughs> they can spin around so quickly. Oh well, yeah. Guy in the 170s doing a nice job earlier. He'd get his speed and then he'd and then he'd get his speed and then he'd kick the rudder and it just idle around the turn and wouldn't get any dirt in the prop. Tinty's number two. Number two. Judges are gonna call a. He, he popped it up. What, what did he holler in Spanish when he before he took off the drone? Leave it. It sounded like but in English. It sounded like leave it. Oh, I hear the horse grounds going again. Yeah, so these, uh, and they have what they call a ashador, like the clown singer, you know, and he'll be narrating things that have happened uh, to music. Oh, know? yeah? And, yeah, and it's just like a, a bit of a song, a bit of a funny thing to do as they're, as they're watching the guys get flung around by the horses. Oh. <laughs> it's quite a brutal thing to watch, but uh, they compete. Some of these guys compete and they earn a lot of money. No, they, it's a, I guess it's the same as the rodeo in, in the USA. You dedicate your, your life, to life to it and you follow the, the competitions around the country. Yeah, well, they said a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of ego. I mean, there's a lot of pride in it. Yeah. It's, I mean, we're doing the same thing down here, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kudos. <laughs> yeah, kudos. kudos. You get street cred. Yeah, and I guess it's, in this case for the horses, it's honor for the whole family and... and, and these guys that are working the horses on on these ranches, it, you realize who's competent. Yeah. So we've got we got Tinty on his landing number two here. Nice and stable. That looked like a real nice. Yeah. But just the everything was very smooth and stable looking there. Yeah. It's difficult to see from here. If the again, you know, if he's on the line. There's some great shots. But if he is on the line. <coughs> so as short as take off. If he take is off on the, the line, one. then he's definitely got. Yeah. He's definitely got a good. If, if if that was clean, that was just a just a beautiful flight. Yep, that was clean. So total 148. Yeah, well, his first was 143. So. See ya. Mm -hmm. 
Look, his landings are both 85 and 86 meters. Yeah. 85 and 86 meters, so he's within just one meter. Yeah, so he's got that um, constant. 1% basically uh, spread between. It's very consistent. And here comes Kike, guy who's... How many people has he gotten together to to uh, create, to, to put their efforts into making this a day? He's I got, what, 30 people working probably, or 50? Yeah. People with different roles to make today come together. Yeah, well, it's been a long time uh, preparing, talking about this event, you know, well, since last year. So um, we were always looking at where we could improve uh, from the last year's event. He's playing. <laughs> he loves now. it. He loves it. Now he's going to pop it up. <coughs> so let's see how short that was. We were talking here about the, the size of the tires. So those bush tires are a real advantage to the bush flying, but a disadvantage to stall because they're big and heavy. Well, there's a little... It's nice to have a little cushion in the tires. That's that's a good thing. You don't you know, but uh, yeah, the, the biggest tires are thirty fives are forty are forty pounds heavier than the thirty ones, and the thirty ones are, gosh, I don't know, twenty pounds heavier than the twenty sixes, and of course the braking, the the the, the diameter of the tire is uh, you know, doesn't help. The, uh, the diameter tire works again. The larger the diameter tire, it works against the diameter of the brake. Yeah. So you're more leverage, more effective if it's with a smaller tire, on especially on the smooth gravel, smooth gravel situation. So he's in a short loop. So he's coming back in now. Yep. First in. landing. Let's hope he gets good and stable. Yep. Good and stabilized. Four and a half knots now, it says on the nose. It looks The windsock looks pretty straight down the runway. It was a good call to change it to today. Yeah. Yeah, Andy, so here's uh, PK on short final for his first attempt at landing. and drop down so smoothly. He knows he's he knows he scratched. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's before the line. There's no pressure on him. He created this whole event. Yeah, and he you lives know, here. <laughs> and he lives here. And everybody came. No pressure on him to do well. Don't worry, KK. <laughs> He'll be fine. Don't worry. It's okay. I mean, his takeoff was, I think it was the shortest, 55 meters. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's short. done shorter. More and more uh, public turning up now. A lot of the stands are uh, uh, setting up. Must be getting towards lunchtime, I'm thinking. What time are we looking? 11. Yep, yeah, 11 o'clock. 
So yeah. You must be chilly. That wind is now up. It is now it? stronger, and you got a short sleeve shirt on. Yeah, it's a bit chilly, but it's okay. Got our first Skywagon warming up. I don't know if he's going to be in the competition or or not. But he's he's warming up now. Heavy touring is next. Touring After is next. key case, the next down. landing, it's going to be the beginning for heavy touring. Three point eight. Same number we've seen earlier today. 3.8 knots of wind right down the runway. <coughs> Still 1340. Oh, now a 6.7 gust. How are you doing there, Kike? That looked pretty tight. Yeah. That looked pretty tight. Well, the crowd are applauding, so yeah. it must have been. <laughs> yeah, I think he made it that time. So he did it kind of backwards, you know. It's normally... Normally, it's nice to... Uh, there you go. It roars off the runway. I hope he's happy with that. Well, it's normal in... Uh, normal for us... There we go. So 101 meters. I wow. Think that's that's Take off, good. 42 meters. Landing, 59. Right. So I think he's... 101 meters, I think, is the winning today. Yeah. Well so, done. <laughs> I, th I think that that may be our best for the day, even with the scratching, the first one. Yeah. So normally, in my mind, I would prefer to win. I would prefer to fly conservatively the first landing have one in the bank have one in the bank yeah and then you know you got a good one in the bank yeah. now go ahead and maybe see if you can just tighten that up just a little yeah. bit and, and hope it hope it doesn't scratch but you know you take it as it comes if you if you get a scratch you just you keep fly and you just keep living and go yeah. oh oh i gotta wake up i gotta yeah. wake up <laughs> yeah. okay i'm not quite as sharp i'm yeah. ready i gotta gotta do something different what's it going to be and then maybe that little more adrenaline a little more pressure yeah. will bring it into something tight like it happened for kike with now just at 101 meters yeah. so let's, let's see how he is when he comes back over <laughs> yeah I guess he'd be pretty happy with that. How much I keep noticing that the dust you know, when the wind picks up on the, the you're flying into the dusty the dusty air. How much does that have much of an effect? Mm, uh, so what's that word uh, that's we were talking about that word yesterday? To, um, Puleva? Pulvo. 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 Pulvo is dust in yeah. Argentina. Well, I think it's a factor of life in Argentina, is yeah. the pulvo. Yeah. And, uh, there's a dust on the... I got a beautiful little VW Amarok pickup. Yeah. It's a, that and the Toyota Hilux, I guess, are the choice vehicles around here. But that little bit of dust on the windshield of the Volkswagen Amarok you know, it's like, oh, I'd like to get rid of that, but i got to get off. I don't want to scratch the windshield. Gotta... Oh, here we go. The Skywagon. Marcelo Benitez. There he goes. Nice and clean. You hear that prop wrap off the hanger and off the trees. So these are the heavy touring. So these will heavy be the, the heaviest group 
of right. planes. And they are, the, in terms of carrying weight, they're the most, the most they're very capable aircraft. Yeah. And they handle great, and they can be flown like a cub, but they're a bigger airplane, so they're going to take up more runway. Yeah. So then we and have the, the leaderboard. I've, I've talked to each of the guys with the Skywagons here yesterday, and they have all fascinating stories about how they acquired their airplanes. Some One fellow flew his, bought his in Texas, yeah. flew it to Alaska, and then turned around and flew it to here. Wow. In about two months, yeah. two months time, yeah. <coughs> we got the leader board up there, so it's confirmed. Kiki yep. is, is number one dog by over forty meters shorter than this number two pilot, which was Tinte yeah. and his BA eighteen. That's in the bush category. Yeah, and I think that's going to be your your tightest group. Yeah. 